good morning students i hope you all are keeping yourself in good health so in the last lecture we have read about chapter number 2 that is is matter around us pure moving ahead with the topic as we were reading about the chemical nature of matter in the first chapter we have read about the physical nature of matter so in this chapter we are dealing with the chemical nature of matter that is chemically the matter can be divided into two types that are pure substances and mixtures so pure substances as we have read already are of two types that are elements and compounds that we have discussed in the last lecture so today we will be reading about mixtures that is mixtures can be classified into two types that are hom homogeneous and heterogeneous this also we have done in the previous video so now moving ahead with the topic today we will be learning about what are mixtures and what are the types of mixtures so mixtures are the substances which consist of two or more elements or compounds or substances which are physically combined so here i have written physically combined let me explain you this like any substance when we mix together when we mix two substances together like if we mix uh, sand and sugar together so we will call it a mixture or when we eat any namkeen you have seen a uh, can very uh, different different namkeens at your house when you have it uh, example you are just having any different different uh, like a mo brown and in that and then alu bhuji and that and different sort of then we call it a mixture that means in a specific packet of namkeen you are having different different types of namkeen in it so we call it a mixture same way when we mix different substances together we can be substances can be pure elements or the compounds together in any proportion okay so we are not having any fixed proportion so that is called as a mixture but also in a mixture they have just to be physically combined not chemically combined for example if you take iron and sulfur now iron is a metal and sulfur is a non metal so if we take some iron granules like iron powder and sulfur powder in a bowl together and we will mix it so we can call it a mixture when we will run any bar magnet over that mixture what will happen all the iron fillings will get stick into the magnet because iron or magnet always attracts iron okay so that was a mixture which we can separate easily by any physical method because in the mixture the different things or the different substances do not combine chemically but only physically okay now if we take the same iron fillings and the same sulfur and then we will heat it after heating it will be a new compound which will be formed that is it converts into black color uh, substance now if again we will rub or we will run the iron magnet a uh, bar magnet over that substance there will be no effect of the attraction of iron because now iron has lost its property it has become a new compound called as iron sulfide so that is a chemical change so when there is a chemical change the thing is called as compound because compounds are the uh, the mixture or when the two different thing combines okay not mixture when two different things or two different elements combines like iron is an element and sulfur is also an element so elements are pure substances that we have read in our first lecture now the two elements will combine together they will form a compound and compounds are pure substances they are not mixtures but when we mix iron and sulfur separately by just a physical process now i hope you understand what does the physical and chemical process or chemical change defines physical change are the reversible processes and chemical changes are irreversible processes okay so now mixtures are the substances in which two different sub substances or the elements or the compounds combined together just physically not chemically in any proportion for example all the gases or all the air 
so we see air around us so air is a mixture of gases so there is a proportion but it, that proportion also get disbalanced sometimes but still we call it a air okay the air is a mixture then uh, salt solution milk uh, many paint etc there are a lot of things which are called as mixtures okay so mixtures can be of two types that is it can be heterogeneous mixture or a homogeneous mixture so there are two types of mixtures homogeneous and heterogeneous homogeneous mixtures are those mixtures in which the substances are completely mixed together uh, and are indistinguishable now indistinguishable word defines that when we are not able to distinguish that means when we are not able to identify what is the two different things like if we mix salt in water after stirring it what we see can we see the salt in the water no the salt particles completely dissolves in the water and when we we'll see through it we will just see the plain water so we cannot distinguish whether there is salt or whether it's a plain water so the homogeneous mixtures appears to be a very very uh, true thing a uh, true solutions or they appears to be sometimes compounds we will not be able to identify if you are having a glass of sugar solution if you will just mix 1 teaspoon of sugar in water and somebody will ask you just tell whether it's sugar in the water we you will not be able to distinguish by seeing you can only distinguish when you taste it okay so that is called as a homogeneous mixture and when you will taste the um, that water with a spoon it will taste it will sweet and you can take any part of the that water from that glass the whole uh, glass of water will taste as same so that means homogeneous mixture means homo homo means same and genus means evenly spread in the homogeneous mixture the solute is evenly spread in the solvent now solute and solvent solute is the thing or the substance which is mixed in the uh, solvent and solvent is a substance into which the solute is mixed i will also give you the definitions of solute and solvent in the next lecture when we will read about solution in detail they are we are also having some numericals when we will practice that so homogeneous mixture can also be termed as true solutions or solutions like solutions are the homogeneous mixture of two or more substances when we are not able to distinguish example salt solution and vinegar vinegar means when you eat your chinese food you would have seen the uh, your mother and or the um, the person who is in the shop adding some vinegar into your food so that is also a, a mixture but it is a solution or a homogeneous mixture metal alloy metal alloy example brass you would have seen brass now brass is an alloy alloy is a thing when we mix two different elements or two or more elements together without any proportion uh, the brass is from example when we mix copper and zinc together the brass is made which is called as alloy but in that it is a solution that means all the particles are evenly mixed into each other um it is a mixture because we can separate them and brass does not have its own property so that is why we are not calling brass as an compound but as a solution because brass is not a compound uh, we can also make brass by mixing different things like lead also so it is not in any proportion so brass is a mixture then pure air pure air means a mixture of gases when there is no pollutant in it if it is will be having pollutant it will be called as a heterogeneous mixture but the pure air is just a homogeneous mixture okay so solution is done now moving with the moving towards the heterogeneous mixture heterogeneous mixtures are those mixtures in which the substances remain separate and one substance is spread throughout the other substance as particles droplets etc so in the heterogeneous mixture when we mix the two different things one thing does not mix completely to the other thing like 
in the case of homogeneous the sugar or the salt is completely dissolving in the water we are not able to distinguish but in the case of heterogeneous mixture the things will not dissolve completely we will still be able to see the particles in that okay so it can be the form of particles it can be the form of droplets it can be the form of vapors also so they are called as a heterogeneous mixture example example sugar and sand mixture polluted air okay polluted air has some suspended particles uh, in it particles of matter in it milk ink butter cheese muddy water etc now milk has some particles of fat in it particles of milk um, milk in it and other things also so it is a heterogeneous mixture now heterogeneous mixtures are again of two types that is colloids and suspensions now colloids are those solutions are those mixtures in which the size of solute again i'll repeat these words solute and solvent so solute is the part or the portion or the substance which is mixed into the solvent like if we mix sugar in water so sugar is mixed in the lesser quantity in the water so sugar is called as solute and water is called as solvent okay if we make ink so we will mix some dye into the water or a liquid so here dye is the solute and the water is the solvent okay or example uh in the milk the fat particles or the cream is the solute and the water is the solvent okay so now in the colloids the size of solute is little bigger than the size of the uh, solute in the case of true solutions like when sugar dissolves in water the sugar comes becomes so small the particles of sugar become so small that it can hide in the intermolecular space of the water okay but not in the case of colloids they are little bigger than the size of the solute of the uh, solution so they can be seen easily example soap solution starch solution milk ink blood and jelly all these comes under the colloids now colloids also have some tendency that is they show tyndall effect now tyndall effect is the scattering of light of colloid particles that is known as tyndall effect now you have you would have observed that in the winters in the winter sometimes uh, when you travel in the dark or in the night uh, okay when you are traveling uh, with a bike or a car at night when there is a fog all around and when the headlights of your bike or of your car goes you can see the beam through a longer distance so the visibility of that beam is due to the uh, presence of some fog in the dark night so that fog behave as a particles of colloid in the air and because of that you can see the beam of light so the beam of light the process or the scattering of light is called as tyndall effect so basically that is the tyndall effect uh, in the daytime you are not able to see the beam of light because there are all the air around us but when you uh, sit in a room and there is a little ventilation corner in your room you must have seen the ray of light entering to your room so that is because of the that is called as the tyndall effect and since the air around us it's not very pure it has some particles in it it's a heterogeneous mixture so we are able to see the beam of light so air basically is a colloid okay when there is a storm it is called as a suspension but a natural air which is around us is a colloid so colloids have this property to scatter the beam of light which is called as a tyndall effect okay so i would like you to uh, show you a diagram of tyndall effect now this is a beaker in this if we will scatter a beam of light here so here in the in this beaker is water and drop of milk uh, if you you will be adding a drop of milk into the beaker in the water it will behave as a colloid 
so when we pass a beam of light through this the beam of light is um, okay in this case of a true solution first of all it's a true solution so you can take anything like you can take a, a mixture of sugar and water the beam of light is not visible through this water you will not be able to see the beam of light although you will see the light here but you will not be able to see the beam of light passing through the solution okay because true solution does not um, show total effect but in the case of colloidal solution so here we will add some um, milk drop in the water and when you will uh, pass the beam of light through this beaker you will uh, easily see a beam of light crossing to this beaker so this is called as a tindal effect so the beam of light will be visible in the colloidal solution or this is the soap solution actually you can also take any solution like ink in the water or milk in water or anything like that so colloids show the beam of scattering of beam of light through them which is called as tyndall effect now suspensions suspensions are the home heterogeneous mixture in which the small particles of solid are spread throughout the liquid without dissolving in it example if we will take sand and will mix it in the water the particles of sand will not dissolve in water and they will be spread all throughout the liquid and they will not dissolve so that is called as suspensions so chalk water uh, again mixture of chalk and water is a suspension if you will mix the wheat flour in the water it will again form suspension muddy water or milk of magnesia milk of magnesia is a base it is also called a suspension sand particles in water so they all are called as suspensions okay so i will like you to tell you in a detailed version uh, here i have made a chart uh, in this i have written all the details or uh, i have just uh, differentiated all three things together that is solutions colloids and suspensions so here uh, first we will be discussing about the um, how kind of a mixture are these so solutions are homogeneous mixtures okay because they just are evenly spread in the solution all throughout homogeneous mixture colloids are they appears to be remember this point very well they appears to be homogeneous but actually they are heterogeneous uh, though there was not a big much space so i have just written it very very in a concise manner uh, please write uh, try to read this so colloids appears to be homogeneous but actually they are heterogeneous and suspensions are heterogeneous mixtures okay first point you can also make this table at in your notebooks so solutions the size of solute particles is extremely small that is less than 1 nanometer it's one small n and small m it is less than 1 nanometer that is uh, 10 to the power minus 9 meter okay so that is the very less size so the size of solutions please do remember learn all these points they are very important uh, also important for exams as well so colloids the size of solute actually we are talking about the size of the particles because all these are solutions um, not these are true solutions these are colloids and suspensions so in the case of heterogeneous mixture the two different things are mixed together uh, or in a liquid not all all the times in the liquids but we will also study about the uh, solid into solid or gases into gases or liquids into liquids or liquids into solid or liquid into gases or solid into gases and solid into liquids so here if we will mix solid into liquids so the solid portion so the particles of solute are whether they are the we are talking about the size of the solute particles so the size of solute particles are very small that is less than one nanometer that is 10 to the power minus nine meter so the in the case of colloids the size of solute particles is large larger than the solutions particles it is between 1 nanometer to 100 nanometer it is 1 nanometer to 100 nanometer in diameter and in the case of suspension the size of solute particles in suspension is larger than 100 nanometer okay so remember this point now next point is the particles of solutions cannot 
be seen in the microscope they are so tiny they are so small that we will not be able to see them by our normal eyes but also we will not be able to see them even under the microscope so they are not visible the particles of solute are not visible at all in the case of colloids the particles of colloids can be seen under the microscope so if you talk about milk or ink we will not be able to see the particles from our normal eyes but yes we can see them under the microscope and in the case of suspensions we can easily see them by our eyes like we can easily see the particles of sand in the solution or in the mixture of water now next is the particles can easily pass through filter paper so if we will filter we will not be able to filter them because the all the solution will pass through the filter paper so the size of the particles is so small that they can easily pass through the filter paper here in the case of colloids the particles also can pass through the filter paper because the size is not very big it is little bigger than the solutions but not as much big so they can also pass through filter paper have you ever thought of filtering milk no you cannot mil filter milk now it will all pass through the filter paper that means the colloids particles can pass through the filter paper in the case of suspension we can easily filter them because they cannot pass through the filter paper if we, you will filter the muddy water so obviously all the mud will be strained on the filter paper so the particles of suspensions cannot pass through the filter paper whereas the particles of solution and colloids can pass through the filter paper next is the solutions are very stable that means that means they are always uh, stable that means uh, they do not separate okay uh, the solutions like if you are having a you are having a glass of water and then you mix a tablespoon of sugar in the water and you stir it well so that all the sugar is dissolved in the water and you keep it aside for 1 hour or just for a full day for 24 hours and then next morning you will check that taste that water it will taste same all through the glass if you will keep that water in a plate okay and then you will drink from any of the side the water will taste same is that it happens because the particles are very stable so they they just evenly spread all around and they don't collect okay so that is in the case of solutions so and same the case of um, colloids also the colloids are quite stable whereas the suspensions are unstable so they keep on moving okay so the particles of solutions do not separate they do not separate from each other they just mix all around the area they are mixed into it colloids also the particles of colloids do not separate out on keeping aside on keeping still on keeping on standing if you will keep it on rest the particles will not separate they will just um, they will be distributed evenly but in the case of suspension the particles of suspension settle down if you have a mixture of sand and water and if you keep it aside for few time for a few minutes it all the particles of sand will settle down in the bottom and you will get the clear water in the top okay so they are bigger in size so they are heavier and they have effect of gravity so they settle down these do not have any effect of gravity on them these also do not have do not have any effect of gravity on them but yes in the case of suspensions they do settle down they have the effect of gravity on them okay now uh the last point is this the true solutions does not scatter light that means they do not show any tindle effect the colloids show tindle effect that means they scatter a beam of light passing through it and here suspensions okay now since we have said in the beginning that the size of suspensions is larger than 100 nanometer but yes it can be to 100 nanometer when it is nearer to the colloidal size sometimes only sometimes it may scatter a beam of light so we cannot say completely no to this but only the sizes towards the colloids only then it will separate the beam of light scatter the beam of light otherwise if it is bigger than that it will not scatter the beam of light so they are called as suspensions so this completes your topic for today in next lecture we will be reading few more things about these things and also some numericals so till then do your work properly and stay safe at your houses thank you